are you thankful for that manna from heaven this morning? Amen. How many knows that no matter what's going on, God will always provide? Amen. You can be seated for a moment this morning. Amen. We just want to welcome you here this morning on this beautiful day that the Lord has given us. Amen. How many's come ready to worship? How many's come ready to praise his name? How many knows he's worthy of it? Amen. I don't know about you, but he's been good to me. Amen. Every time I turn around, I see the goodness of God in my life. Amen. Even when I don't deserve it. That's true. Amen. Because sometimes Russ is a moron. Amen. <laughs> they sometimes that I don't deserve the goodness of God. That's a little bit too good of an amen back there, sister. But even when I don't deserve it, he's still good to me. Amen. Even when I'm not faithful, I'm thankful that he is still faithful. Amen. I love him this morning. I came to worship him. I want to remind you about our tithe and our offering. Amen. I know we don't take it up normally right now the way we usually do, but if you still are interested in helping give and sow into the ministry, amen, you can still use the square back there. It's been sanitized and everything. You can also uh, use our church center app. Just find Anchor of Hope Tabernacle and give online. We have text to give. That number is still 84321 to text to give. Or also there will be somebody back at the door if you'd like to give cash or a check or whatever. There will be somebody back at the door at the end of service. So just want to remind you of that. I know sometimes I forget to mention that now that we're not doing it the normal way. And I just wanted to make clear that we are still having those uh, options there to give and to sow in your tithing and your offering. Amen. But we're looking forward to what God's doing in this place. Amen. How many's come with an expectation in your heart? I promise you if you've come expecting God to move, He'll move. Amen. Now if you've come just because it's Sunday morning and this is the thing to do, that's probably all you're going to get out of it. Amen. But if you've come ready to engage in worship and to magnify His name, I promise you He will not leave you the same. Amen. Healing is here. I believe that. I believe that healing is here. I was talking to Brother Dean Goodson, asking how Miss Ethel was, and he says she's real sick. She just can't get over it. Amen. I believe that healing is here for Sister Ethel. I believe where she's at, watching on live stream this morning, I believe that the healer is there to touch her. Amen. Whatever we're in need of today, God is able. Amen. Do you believe that this morning? Let's stand. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And we're just going to turn this service over to Him. Amen. And let Him have His way. But how many has a need that you may just want to signify by raising your hand? Amen. Look around at your neighbors. Amen. See who has their hand raised. And let's pray for them. Amen. Pray for their need like it was yours. Amen. If they have a lost loved one, pray for it like it was your child that was lost. Pray for it like it was your grandchild or your mother that needed healing. Pray for Sister Ethel this morning like she's your mama that needs a healing in her body. Amen. Let's touch heaven for each other. Amen. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we love you. We thank you for who you are, God. Lord, we thank you for this chance and opportunity to be in your house, God. Lord, we thank you, Father, that whatever we've come in need of today, God, Lord, that you are more than able to accomplish everything that we need, God, whether it's healing, whether it's salvation, deliverance, God, whether we just need a refreshing touch of your spirit in our lives, God. Lord, we know that you are here to meet the needs of your people, God. Lord, Lord, you've seen the hands that were raised, Father. Lord, they don't have to utter a word to me, God, but you know every single one of them, Father. And Lord, you're able, God, Lord, to move on, on those situations. God, Lord, you're able to move in families. You're able to move in hearts and in lives, God. Lord, and we're believing for that this morning, God. Lord, we didn't come here this morning just because it's what you're supposed to do on Sunday. But God, we came here, Father, to give you glory and to give you praise because because you alone are worthy, God. Lord, there is none other besides you that is worthy of our praise, Lord. And Father, as we worship you today, God, Lord, we just ask that you inhabit our praises, Father. Lord, let our praises be a sweet aroma to you, God. Lord, and as we lift you 
high, we ask that you just draw all men unto you, Father. Lord, bring in the lost. Bring in the hurting. Bring in the hopeless, God. Lord, the ones that are walking in darkness, Father, and they can't see the light, God. Lord, show them the light, Father, and show them that Jesus is the answer. He's always been the answer, and he'll always be the answer, Father. Lord, we magnify you today, God. Lord, we worship you, Jesus, and we lift your name on high, God. Lord, have your way in this place, God. Anoint this service. Anoint the singing. Anoint the preaching, God. Father, and forever change our hearts and lives. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's worship him this morning.
I want you to open your heart and your life and I want you to worship like you never have before. You let God know this is your prayer. Listen, if your neighbor don't need it, you tell God you need it. If nobody else wants it, I want it. I want what he has for us. Mountains are still being moved and strongholds are still being loosed. If you'll only believe and you'll only trust We'll see the glory of God today. Amen. Let's worship. Mountains are still being
Yes. Yes. Give the Lord a hand. He is still God. He's still a healer. He's still the great I am. He's still my hope and my joy and my peace. He's still everything that I need this morning. Our world may be turning its back on him. Amen. And listen to me now. This is going to hurt just a little bit. But our churches may be turning their back on him. But we still need Jesus. We need him more today than we did yesterday. Amen. And I want him to fill my heart and fill my life with an anticipation. Every time that we come together, I want to expect that this is the day that God's going to do and praying about, we've been believing for, we've been trusting for. And how many knows there ain't no devils big enough to stop when God gets ready to move? He'll sweep right on through here and touch our hearts and touch our lives if we will yield ourselves. Amen. The biggest enemy you and I have is ourself. If we can get past self, we can see God move. The problem is we can't get past self sometimes. You know, there's just a whole lot of us in the way. Uh, sometimes there's a little more of some of us than there are of others, but, you know, there, there's a lot of me to get out of the way, and I have to move Tim out of the way. Amen, to let God in and into our hearts and lives. And this is going to be very familiar, at least the scripture reading is to you this morning, but it's Acts chapter 2. If you'll turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 2, it'll be on the screen if you don't have your Bibles or if you prefer to follow along that way. I'm just going to read four verses of scripture. Got a few notes I jotted down and I'm going to turn you loose. All right? That should take every bit of about 10 minutes, and we'll be, <laughs> we'll be out of here. Amen. How many, how many really believe that? <laughs> well, <laughs> I feel his whole spirit of unbelief doesn't come in here now. <laughs> Amen. Well, we, we'll try not to hold you too long. Acts chapter 2, and begin reading with verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord. I may believe it's important. To come in one accord, not our minds in 40 or 50 different directions, but come into the house of God focused with an expectation. If we all got here with an expectation, we wouldn't have to pump, prime, amen. Somebody wouldn't have to prod you to lift your hand. You'd go ahead and lift your hand. Preacher wouldn't have to say, say amen. You'd be saying amen. Amen. And heaven forbid that somebody would want to shout. <laughs> Come on now. Amen. We still believe in that, don't we? We don't see it very much, but we still believe in it. Amen. We still believe in miracles. We still believe he's the healer. We still believe he's a savior and a deliverer. And if God's people intentional about coming to the house of God, amen, that we come in here, amen, telling the devil, not today, Satan. You ain't going to stop me today. Amen. Yesterday morning, I can't even remember what it was over, but 
Nana was trying to tell Oliver, three years old, he had to do this, he had to do that. He just looked at her and said, not today, Satan. <laughs> I, I just walked over to the other side of the room and said, preach right there. <laughs> just, just, just go ahead. Amen. And, and she said, we don't always say that. <laughs> but I would say, don't take that away from that child. <laughs> just, but, you know, he's checking me out right now. Sometimes we just got to say, not today, Satan. Amen. You ain't going to steal my joy today. You ain't going to steal my peace today. You ain't going to take my happiness today. Amen. I came to the house of God ready to praise, ready to worship, ready to receive. Amen. How many believe you'll leave here different than you came? Amen. You won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to believe that. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord and in one place. And suddenly, there came a sound. Now, if you don't have that word underlined in your Bible, sound, underline it. If you can't write in your Bible, reach over to your neighbor and underline it in theirs. Amen. Just somebody needs to underline that scripture. There came a sound from heaven. When the Holy Ghost shows up, there's a sound going to take place. Amen. When the Holy Ghost, I'm going to preach right there for a minute. When the Holy Ghost moves in the room, there's going to be a sound. Amen. When the Holy Ghost begins to deal with hearts and lives, there'll be a sound. There'll be a change. There'll be a transformation. When the Holy Ghost has his way in a church, amen, people will be ready to receive. When the Spirit of God is allowed to move, amen, in the sanctuary, we'll see a transformation of hearts and lives. When the Spirit of God comes into a place, conviction will be there. You just can't Keep on living the way you're living. Amen. You're going to want to turn around and do things right. Amen. You'll either, listen to me now, the Spirit of God will do one of two things. It'll bring you closer to Him or it'll drive you further away from Him because you will not be comfortable sitting there living in sin when the Holy Ghost is moving in the atmosphere. Amen. Something in your heart is going to say, I need to get things right. I I need to turn things around. Either that or I need to get out of here. Amen. Come on. I have seen people before while I was preaching. One guy I was believing God for so strong had been month after month after month. I had been believing that God would really get a hold of him. And one, I, I don't know if it was a Sunday night or a Wednesday night. I do know it was nighttime. And I was preaching and the Spirit of God was moving through that place. And I watched him grab the pew in front of him. And I thought in my mind, this is it. He's fixing to come while I'm preaching. But he ran toward the back door and he had to get out of there. I was crushed in my spirit for a while. But as I began to pray and talk to God after the service... He let me know. He said, son, the convicting power of the Holy Ghost was so strong that he just couldn't sit there. That's what I want to see again. Amen. That either you run to the altar or you run out the door because the Spirit of God is too great. Amen. To let you dabble in sin and think you're going to be all right. He said, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, then I will receive you. Amen. Amen. We got to turn loose of some things in order to grab a hold of God. Now I'm preaching to church folk right now. Amen. Amen. We got to be willing to turn loose but so we can grab a hold. Amen. Amen. The sinner already knows they're a sinner. You ain't got to point it out to them. They already know they need to make a change in their life. Amen. What we're here for is to offer them that change. Amen. But if they see you acting the way they act, if they hear you talking the way they talk, amen, if your fingers ain't got a filter on Facebook, when you type stupid stuff, what do you think? They, come on. Mm, help me, Lord. 
Amen. I think I'm going to have to do this by myself this morning. But just hold on. I've done it before. Amen. We're going to plow right on through this thing. Amen. And the glory of God's going to touch you whether you like it or not. Amen. He's in the house. I said he's in the house. Amen. He don't come to do you harm. He comes to do you good. Amen. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. I said, can't nobody do you like Jesus. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. I feel a little black this morning. Oh, hmm. somebody said, well, they're going to march. Well, I wish they would. Come on. I wish somebody would march in here. Lost lives matter. Amen. Yes, it does. Look at me. Look at me, Facebook. Eternity, your eternity matters to me. I care about where you're going to spend eternity. And I want you to know you got to get a hold of Jesus and you got to hang on. Don't be acting a fool. Amen. Don't be acting a fool. Don't be acting like the world. If you've been saved, you've been redeemed, be different. Rise up and be different. Be counted in this generation. Let your voice be heard. Amen. That you dare to be different. Come on. How many believers we got in the house? Wave at me if you're a believer. Come on. I thought I was by myself a while ago. Lord, look at all the here. Ain't no telling what can take place in here. We just got to believe and trust and know that God is able. Do you know he's able? Amen. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Not a sound from Oklahoma, but a sound from heaven. As of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled part of the house. Well, it filled the amen corner. Well, it filled the three or four over there that really meant business. Come on. It filled the whole house. The whole house. Mm. Lord, help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. I'm trying to trying to get by without saying some things, but you know, sometimes you just got to give in and say it. Say amen. Amen. It filled the whole house. What would it be to be in the house of God, whether it's a small church like ours or a medium-sized church or a big church, amen, what would it be if the Spirit of God could fill the whole house? Not one or two people, not three or four people, but what if everybody took the brakes off and said, fill me up, and he could sweep through the place and fill every vessel that was there. I dare say we haven't seen too many of those. Amen. You might have seen services where people were emotional, but I'm talking about when the Spirit of God fills somebody. Because I want to tell you something, you can get emotional. But you can get emotional at a ball game. Amen. You can get emotional hollering. If that's your kid out there, you get emotional. You can scream. My kids used to play T ball and I'd scream out, Run! Run! Go! Run! Be beating that fence to death. Run! Tab had them big long legs and she looked like she was running in slow motion be doing like that, I'd be running down the side screaming at her, run! <laughs> run! Run like you do at home. Run like you're out in the yard chasing your brothers. Run! Run! Run like you do when I'm about to spank you. Run! <laughs> run! Amen. Put, put some effort to it. Get on, stretch on out there, do something. We in the church, we need to push through sometime. Amen. We need to not sit there and say, well, I don't guess I'm going to get a blessing today. Are you going to let the devil rob you? Are you going to let the devil steal from you? Are you going to get determined? You're going to push yourself through. I didn't come here to get run out. I come here to enter in. Come on. How many wants to enter on in? 
Amen. They were all in one place, in one accord, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. Mm, thank you, Lord. And it sat upon each of them. Not every other one, not social distancing, but it sat on each one of them. Fill them all up. Come on. And they were all, not just 12. There was 120 in that upper room. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Fill me again, God. Look at me. Look at me earnestly. If you don't want it, you pray, God, give me your portion that you're wasting. Okay, would you do that? Because this preacher needs it. I need the Holy Ghost. I need the freshness of the Holy Ghost. And if you're going to waste what God reserved for you, amen, stretch your hand to me and say, give it to him. Give it to him, God. Amen. If you can get by without it, I cannot live without it. I've got to have him. I've got to have him. I can't get through life without the power of the Holy Ghost. I can't do this thing without the power of the Holy Ghost. I need him. I can't stay delivered without the power of the Holy Ghost. I need him. Amen. How many needs him in here? Do you need him? Do you really need him? You need more of Jesus and less of the world. You need to turn that old boob tube off. Amen. And put some Holy Ghost in you. Turn off him filthy Movies with the, all the filthy language. You put junk in you, junk's going to come out of you. What comes out of your mouth is what you're putting in your spirit. Come on. If you're letting filth burst out of your mouth, that's because you're feeding that thing. Amen. Quit doing it. You got a choice in the matter. It ain't like somebody's holding you down and making you do this and making you do that. Come on. You can choose to do what you want to do. Now smile at me. Amen. Your brother-in-law does that quite a bit. Uh, he'll, get, he'll start stepping on people's toes. And he'll get all over them. Then he'll walk right up and he'll grin. He'll say, now smile at me. <laughs> Amen. And the night I got saved, that's what he was doing. He was preaching hard. Amen. And, and I thought, Lord, have mercy. That man knows my whole life. And he'd look at me right real hard, them little beady eyes and that little hook nose. Amen. Then he'd grin. And I, I thought, well, he's different than anybody I've ever seen before in my life. Amen. And at the end of that service, I found myself down at the front, giving my heart and life to the Lord Jesus, not to Paul Ramsey, but I gave my heart to Jesus. But he was the instrument that pulled me in. Come on, somebody. Amen. We all all need somebody who will point us to a man called Jesus. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Is there anybody believes that we need a sound again? That's the title of my message this morning. We need the sound. We need the sound, every which way you want to say it. We need the sound. We need the sound. In, in verse 2, we read that suddenly there came a sound from heaven. I want to talk to you this morning on how we need the sound. What a thought. The church needs the sound again. We've got a racket, but we need the sound. We've got screaming and hollering and I can't help it. I get excited. I get loud. But we need a sound. We need the Spirit of God moving in our church again. I'm probably, I'm just giving you a little warning. I'm probably going to step on some toes this morning. So draw your feet in just a little bit. Amen. We're going to trim some bushes and do a little weed eating. Okay? Come on. You ready? Some time ago, I was working in my yard and spending a little time outside 
But this thought just started stirring in my spirit. There's so many sounds in the church today. We have echoes of every new preacher who burst on the scene. I thought this morning as I was reading over my notes, I thought about, I don't know, I don't even know how many years ago it was, probably 18 years ago at youth camp, probably before you had anything to do with it. Amen. And, and, and Chad and Dean had asked me to come and minister the last night, but I showed up the night before. I just wanted to be there and feel things out a little bit. And so the latest fad was the preachers, I don't know who it was, somebody on TV would shake their hanky at somebody and they'd fall out and do all this. So there was one particular church there that everybody in there had a handkerchief. And they was up behind people in, in the altar and they was running. I looked over at Brother Chad. I said, they better not. I said, I'm fixing to hurt some feelings. I said, people better get saved before tomorrow night, brother. You better do some preaching in the morning and straighten this thing out. Amen. They start that stuff. When I, when I call a prayer line tomorrow night, their hanky will be yanked out of their hand. So the stupidest stuff I've ever seen in my life. And, and some of the people needed deliverance up behind somebody. Shake a booger on them. I mean, my goodness. You know, the <laughs> said it'd make him fall out. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't sure if I've used that yet this morning. <laughs> you want to... <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, amen well sure enough they got up there Sunday night and here they come I said put them up don't need your handkerchief we've got the Holy Ghost you can't fabricate a move of God you can't be an echo of somebody else you've got to be who God called you to be he didn't call me to shake a hanky. That's right. That's right. He didn't call me to breathe on people. Come on. Well, no wonder so many people fall out. People eat so much garlic. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Woo! Preach right there, preacher. Amen. But hear me. The latest fad that shows up on your TV. We do it with music just like we do preaching. The latest fad is what we want. We want to do the latest thing. We want to act like the latest group. We Come on. We want to mimic what somebody else is doing. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. If I veer off of that, don't you dare follow me. But if I'm following Jesus, you better line up and you better follow me. If I'm your leader, and I checked this morning and I still am. Amen. If I'm following Christ, you better line up and you better follow along with me. But if I take my eyes off of Jesus and I start putting my eyes on self, don't you follow me then. You follow the Word of God. You get a hold of the principles of the Word of God and don't you sway from it. I can't take you to heaven, but Jesus can. I cannot deliver you, but Jesus can. This Holy Ghost I'm preaching about this morning will set you free. Now, he just happens to live in me and happens to have given me a gift that if you're bound, you can be set free. Amen. But outside of him, I can't do a thing. In my own power, I can't do it. I don't possess the power myself, but the power possesses me. Oh yeah, that's a good place to shout. Come on, he's in me. We've got echoes of every new preacher who burst on the scene. We have sounds from Gainesville, sounds from Charlotte, sounds from Texas, sounds from TBN, SBN, and CBN. Amen, but what we need is a sound from heaven. How long has it been since God got your attention real good? 
How long has it been since the Holy Ghost began to move on you until you were shaking on the inside? You felt your insides trembling and you knew the Spirit of God was moving on you. How long has it been since you encountered God in that degree? Some will say, I ain't never felt it that way. Some will say, well, five, ten years ago. <laughs> you know why we're so busy with everything else? Well, preacher, just time. There's just not enough time. There's as much time as there's ever been. The problem is we got so many gadgets now that occupy our time, our finger. We ought to have the strongest thumbs in the land. Amen. You can type in a text message without looking. Come on. I do this. I still have to do them. I have to send emails every day, but I have the hunt and peck method. I work a job where I have to do this all through the day, but it's, it's the one finger approach. Ain't that right, Jeff? I've been with him before. He just looks at me and says, oh, Lord. But I get it out. Amen. I just keep hunting until I find the right one. I get it out there. I send my message out. I send, send what I need to send. I get them out there. Amen. But we, we're so trained with this. We can't live without a gadget. We can't live without an iPad, without an iPhone, without, come on, an Android. We can't, oh, I, I got to have a Mac. I got to have a this. I got to have a that. Got to have a Big Mac. Boy, that'd be good right now. <laughs> Amen. Got to have, have all kind of things. We got to have this, that, the other. The latest thing that comes out. Amen. Got to have the, the, the best TV. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. No matter where you sit, you, you get the same picture. Ain't that just nice? You can sit from the side and you can see it just the same. When's the last time the Holy Ghost shook you? Well, it's been a while. It's been a while. You know why? We're filling our life up with everything else. And watch it. We've got time for everything else. But we don't have time for Jesus. Carve you out some time in the day for Jesus. And that ain't husband time or wife time. It's Jesus time. Slip off somewhere till you hear from Him. Well, I just don't think God will speak to me. Well, you ain't give Him a chance. Amen. Give him a chance. He'll talk to you. Amen. I'm going to go on so I don't hurt your feelings. Are you still with me? Amen. The church has become so molded by every sound that comes on the scene until we would be scared to death if the sound from heaven came rushing in this morning. We would not know how to handle the Holy Ghost come sweeping in the place. Promise you, there'd be, probably be some folk jump up and run for the door if the genuine move of the Holy Ghost just swept right through here. Notice, the scripture said a sound, meaning it was a distinguishable sound set apart from others. In other words, they could not confuse what they heard with something else. It couldn't be confused with any other sound and its origin was from heaven. Not a book, not Hollywood, not the seminary, nor any other man-made place. The sound was from heaven. But hear me. It took those 120, 10 days to get ready for the Holy Ghost to sweep through that place. They just didn't show up there and all of a sudden they was in one place, one accord. 10 days and nights they tarried. They put everything else on hold. Have you lately put everything else on hold? And ask Jesus to move? Have you put everything else on hold and said, Lord, I need you 
more than I need anything else? Have you? Have you? Are you with me? Have you? We need Jesus. We need Jesus. When the Lord moves in a place, he knows how to announce that he's there. Amen. We all know that the world is in trouble and that we need help. Anybody that can look at our world today and not see that it needs help. Oh, but you know what? We don't need, we don't need an echo of somebody else. We need a sound from heaven. We need the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't need another politician who thinks that his or her party is the answer to the problem, to what's going on in America. The church is failing to see is this, that it's not just the world that's in trouble. The church is in trouble too. What will fix or hit? We need you, God. Genuine move of the Holy Ghost that will shake the sin. Out. Amen. Some of our church, the church is in trouble. A board meeting won't fix it. We need the Holy Ghost. Today in a, in a pastor's room I belong after this COVID scare that has been there, after the lockdown, it's being tossed around in the room. They said that a, a lot of numbers are way down. Their attendance is nowhere near what it was pre-COVID-19. And it was stated that if it was just the fear of the unknown or of getting sick, that it could be understood. But one pastor said, when my people are everywhere else but church. And listen, folk, we so stupid with our devices, everybody knows where we're at. They know when you're using the bathroom. They know when you're taking a shower. I'll be back on in a little while. I'm going to go take a shower. Yeah. Yeah. Wife said I was stinking. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. We're so brainwashed yeah. like we think somebody cares. Well, I've got I've got 777 friends on Facebook. Where are they at? Where are they? Come on. Did you bring any of them to church with you? Well, no, they had something else to do. Oh, they ain't real friends then. Well, they, uh, well you know what I mean. We thrive. We want somebody to vindicate us. We want somebody to acknowledge us. We want to put something on and see how many likes we can get. Oh, I, go. I told you I'm going to step on some toes. Amen. Draw them feet in just a little bit. Amen. We want to see how many people actually notices what we're saying. And we use it like we got a platform to speak to the, the nation. Did you understand what you put there? Don't go outside your little circle of friends. You ain't talking to the president. You ain't talking to the governor. You're pretty much looking in the mirror talking to yourself. So you'd be just as well go look in the mirror and say, You big dummy! <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone too because, you know, just because. <laughs> I'd like to live to get out of here. Security, <laughs> y'all stay close, okay? <laughs> All right. Pastor may need a little help getting off the platform this morning. <laughs> Amen. We, we need, I know it's tough. It's tough to swallow. Amen. It's tough to swallow. Amen. It's really tough to swallow. But what kind of influence are you putting out anyway? If you're going to put an influence, go ahead and do a positive one. Say something good about the Lord. Yeah. Say something good about what God's done for you. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. Just, you know. <laughs> a 
Some people like them, some people don't. Some people wear them, some people won't. But the bottom line is, you got to make your decision. Nobody else is in your shoes. Let them walk their walk. And you walk yours. You make your choice, and then you live with it. That's right. Do it. Do it. I got my ideas about it. I hate them. <laughs> you know, it's just my idea. But my idea, I ain't preaching from the gospel. I'm just telling you my idea. I hate them. But, hey, I ain't the governor. Wouldn't want to be. I do have a vote coming up. And if I don't use my vote, then I need to seal my lips. It's like, it's like people, so a preacher told me this the other day. He said, we had some new people come to our church and, and they all gave the first week that they came. They came back the next week and a big percentage dropped off and then somebody put on there, I don't understand exactly, somebody used Facebook, I don't exactly understand what it is about giving. And he said, all the answers that started coming in that people were giving and he said, I started researching every one of them that was giving answers, and not one of them was a giver. Not one of them. You know what I have always said in church? And I'm going to smile. <laughs> I'm going back to my Brother Paul days. I'm going to smile here. <laughs> I'm going to smile ahead of time so you won't get mad at me. If you ain't giving and supporting, you ain't got a word in what goes on here. <laughs> I'll smile while I'm saying it. Amen. If you ain't putting your money where your mouth is, I don't want to hear you. Amen. Don't want to hear your grumbling and complaining about things unless you're willing to back it up and support it and pray for it and believe in it. Now, I didn't just develop that theory. I've had that my entire Christian life. And ever since I've been a pastor, that's been the way I've told folk. If you don't believe in it, if you don't, don't give it if you don't believe in it. Keep your money. Bless God, keep it. You ain't going to bankrupt heaven. Amen. 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 I've had people stand in my face. I'll do this. I said, keep your money. What did, what did Simon Peter tell them? You perish with your money. And if a preacher can be bought, yeah. he ain't worth a grain of salt anyway. Amen. 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 If he's in it for the money, he's in it for the wrong reason. Yeah, come on, come on. But then you got the other group of people that think God just rains money down out of heaven to pay the bills. He uses people. He always has. From the beginning of time to do everything that he's done, he's used people. The question is, are you willing? Am I willing? Am I going to be used? So people were saying, you know, this one pastor, I could feel his pain through what he was saying. He said if, if it was just fear of coming to the church uh, that people weren't coming because they're afraid of a disease. But when I see they're everywhere else, they're at every event they can get to. They're at the beach, walking on the beach. They're here, they're doing that, they're doing the other. They're doing all these kind of things. Amen, but they're afraid to go to the house of God. And, and I sat, and my wife and I have been talking about this for some time now. It, it is strange, but listen to me. Throughout history, all throughout history, every time there was trouble, or every time there was a disaster, people would turn to God. Yeah. Prayers would be made on behalf of our nation, and God would send help. But not this time. We aren't seeing the return to God that this virus and this lockdown should have brought. You know why? We need a sound. We've not been shaken yet. We still got money in the bank. We can still go in the grocery store and buy. It ain't too far on the heels of everything that's going on. You're going to have to make a decision. Where are you going to be? What are you going to do? 
When you got to make a decision, you're going to take a mark. And it's been preached for years and years and years that it's coming to the point that we just totally lost out with it. It don't bother us anymore. It's the same thing that happens when Hollywood shows murder after murder after murder and rape after rape after rape and you can pick up your paper or turn on your TV and it doesn't move you. You're not hurt when some child gets molested because you've heard it over and over and over and you've hardened your heart to it. We have hardened our heart to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the point that we're not moved with fear anymore. If my mom had heard me remotely, remotely talk about a preacher or dishonor a man of God, she would have backhanded me. I'd have woke up in next week sometime. She didn't care. She didn't care what she she could be washing dishes. She heard you say something disrespectful. She pulled them hands right out of that dishwater and popped your face. And she'd pop your mouth. She'd say, Don't you ever let nothing like that come out of your mouth again toward a man of God. You didn't call them? Leave them alone. Boy, that's hard, ain't it? You didn't call them? Leave them alone. Let God handle them. Pastor Luke preached something like that to us a few years back. If they're out of line, if they're out of order, if they're living in sin, leave them alone. God will bring them around. God will bring them around. And if they don't want to hear God, that's between them and God. Judgment will come. You'll see it. Judgment will come. They won't get by forever. Come on. Can't hide forever. Judgment comes. Listen to this. If judgment begins at the house of God, what shall be the end of the sinner and the ungodly? It's a little hard, ain't it? (laughs) Amen. Now listen, throughout history, throughout my lifetime, before my lifetime, my dad was in World War II. When our nation was at war, churches prayed. People prayed. People sought God. They prayed over their children that were out fighting a battle. Amen. They prayed and they prayed and they prayed and they prayed some more. Everything that's happened. You remember the twin towers? Amen. When when, when the, the planes were crashed into them and we watched it on TV as they crumbled down. People started crying out to God. The Gulf War even made people start crying out to God. But we've hardened our heart to the point that it don't phase us anymore. We're not moved anymore. We don't have compassion anymore. We need to move. We need to move. We need a genuine move and we need a sound from heaven. Every message I've preached in the last month or so, it don't matter what I start out preaching, I come across saying the same thing. Go back and listen to it. At least for a portion of the service, the same message keeps popping out and coming out. Amen. Our nation's in trouble. If you don't think God's trying to wake you up, At judgment day, you listen to me. At judgment day, you ain't going to point your finger at me and say, I wish you would have told me. I wish you would have told me I was in sin. I wish you would have told me I wasn't living right. You hearing me this morning, if you're in sin and you're in the world, amen, you're snorting, you're smoking, you're drinking, amen, you're doing things you ought not to be doing, get out of the world and get to the altar. Time's running out. Time's running out. One day there'll be the last altar call given. Longest altar call in history was when Noah built the ark. 
when God let everybody go in, Noah and his family, and then all the animals. And for seven days, he left that door open. A seven-day altar call. At the end of seven days, God took his hand. Now listen, this is important to catch. He let Noah build the ark. He gave him the plan, told him what to do. He laid every board on it. Him and his boys put everything on there that had to be there. But when it came time to shut the door, God did it. And God shut the door and sealed them in. Why? Noah, when he heard that first knock, yeah. open the door, Noah! Yeah. Yeah. I believe you now, Noah! Open the door! He would have done everything he could to open the door. But Noah didn't shut that door so he couldn't open it. God shut it. And when God shut them in, that was the end. Watch it. The very, the very thing that saved Noah and his family, the rain, the rain, the rain that fell from the sky never had been rain before. Amen. But all of a sudden it was a gully washer and not just the rain coming down, but the phantoms of the deep, they burst open and it started coming from below and above and it lifted that ark and it sailed them off to safety. But the very thing that saved them condemned the world and the judgment was on the world and it cost them their lives. Babies! imagine Dre can you imagine holding that little girl up above your head while water's up to here and you're screaming no save my baby but no one can do it because God shut the door it's too late now it's too late now it's too late now you're hearing this preacher this morning and it's not too late to get things right how about you Jen how about Rye holding her up? Save my baby! Save my baby! But one day, one day, it could be today. I will have preached my last message, given my last altar call. We could walk out that door be opening up your car and the eastern sky split wide open. Amen. And him step out of glory and you hear a trumpet sound and the saints of God go to meet him in the air and you're standing there wondering why did I not listen? mustering up every bit of Holy Ghost I've got because I've got to preach what God's put in my heart. Don't you let Hollywood, don't you let some writer that wrote a book tell you that after he comes, you'll be able to get things right with God. You better get it right now. If the Holy Ghost in me is anything, and you may question it, but if the Spirit of God that rests upon me all these years has meant anything, then you better be ready. You better not bank on a second chance. You better not bank on a second wave of being able to get things right then. You better bank on the fact that when He comes, if you ain't ready, you're left. Nothing left for you but judgment then. Talked to a preacher in Tennessee one time. You know the man. We talk about him sometimes. I can't even call his name now, but your mom's dealt with him some. And uh, years ago, probably 20 years ago, we were sending, could have been longer. The embargo was on in Haiti and nobody could go out, nobody could come in. And he had transfer trucks, people in his church. They were taking loads of goods to Texas, to the port. And the government was going to allow a mercy ship to go into Haiti. I heard of this man, and I went up. I called, talked to him. He told me if I had things and had somebody there, if I'd bring them up, 
he'd get make sure it got there to the ship. So we were supporting Pastor Simon and all of his churches in Haiti. We tried to support and tried to help them. He had 17 pastors, I believe it was. And so we got a few truckloads of things and we took them up there. And we were talking about pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, you know, uh, what everybody says. He says, Pastor, I don't know how you believe, but I, here, here's my thought. He said, I'd rather have my people ready to go through tribulation and then not have to as to tell them they're not going to have to and then they had to. I was a young man. I thought that makes a lot of sense to me. But it was already my heart. Everything God had been dealing with me on in my hours of digging through this word. That was my thought anyway. These are they that came out of great tribulation. That love not their life to the death. Oh yeah, there's, there's scripture. And, and I know you can argue anything you want to argue, but let me tell you, the Holy Ghost just witnesses, you better stick with it. Amen. You don't have to agree with me. I ain't going to dislike you. I'll keep on loving you and I'll keep on preaching to you. Amen. But I'm going to tell you what I feel. So that when the time comes, you ain't going to point your finger at me. <laughs> Boy, I wish you'd preach a little harder. Well, if it gets very much harder, I don't know if I'll have anybody to preach to. <laughs> yeah. Amen. But I got to do what I got to do. Amen. This ain't a cakewalk. Amen. We're not playing bingo. This is eternity. This is eternity. We need a sound. All the preachers I talked about, all the Christian networks I just talked about, I don't have anything against these places or preachers that I've made any reference to. I listen to them myself from time to time. And I sometimes I get really refreshed by some things they have to say. They may believe entirely different from me. But I can't even count the times that God's been dealing with me on a, on a message and I go down the road and I turn the radio on and Dr. David Jeremiah or somebody is coming out with the very same thing that I just preached or fixing to preach. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> just, you know, one's mellowed down, one's fired up. <laughs> just, just a little different approach to it, but the same message. Amen. So I'm not saying... Don't listen to these folk. But I'm saying for the final answer, you better go to the Word of God. Me, them, anybody else, you go to the Word of God for your final answer. Amen. Is that good? I get refreshed by some things that these people have to say. What I'm saying is this. If you think their church or their platform is what you need to, thing change, to change things in your life, then you're mistaken. I've heard people say, if I could just go to their church or if so-and-so was my pastor, no, nah, that wouldn't change you. You'd still have the same issue you've got right now. You haven't figured it out yet. You don't need a man. You need a sound from heaven. We were in tent meeting one night up in the mountains. Brother Paul was there. My associate pastor was going to preach that night. And a lady came in about 30 minutes before church. She said, I hope y'all got something here. I need to be healed. I went to Oral Roberts and he couldn't heal me. My associate pastor said, whoa, stop right there. You ain't putting that monkey on either one of our backs. You're looking to a man. And a man can't heal you. He said, but lady... If you'll believe Jesus, there ain't no telling what it'll be when you leave this tent tonight. Now, it almost offended her to the point that she left, but she decided to stay. And guess what? Guess what? When she got her eyes off of men and put her eyes on Jesus, 
she got her healing. And that doesn't mean that God won't send you to somebody. Because most of you heard me tell this story. Some lady called me up on a, I think it was Wednesday morning. I know it was Wednesday night when she came. She told me her name, told me she was dying. The doctors couldn't do anything for her anymore. And she said, do you believe in anointing with oil? I said, sure do. She said, God spoke to me and told me if I would call you and come to your church and have you anoint me with oil, he would heal me. I said, lady, if God said that, if God said that, I'm crazy enough to believe with you. I said, and I want to take it a step further. If God told you that, there ain't no devil big enough to keep you from getting your healing. We start at 7 o'clock. Well, when that lady walked in, I didn't have to guess who she was. Little puny little arms and legs. Looked like broom handles. Came walking in, sat down right on the front row. And I preached. I wasn't going to do it just because she was there. I wasn't going to stop everything and anoint her right then. I, you wait on the Holy Ghost. I preached what God had given me to preach. I started praying for some people. Then I felt the unction. And I said, lady, stand to your feet. And I told everybody in the church, I said, this lady called me today. Doctors have given up on her. Look at her. She's dying. She's dying right in front of everybody. Amen. I said, but God told her, if we would anoint her with oil, he'd heal her. I said, now I ain't God, but I believe God. And if God told her this, and I repeated to them, there ain't no devil big enough to keep her from getting her healing. I took a little bit of oil, put it on my hands, got some ladies of the church to get around her. I touched her on the forehead. She hit the floor, and when she got up, she was healed. Come on. She had a friend who came to our church, Sister Roxy. And Roxy was our junior high teacher and she was back in the back. So happens that night they had a pizza party for the junior high kids. The lady met her in the hallway, going down the hallway, said, Roxy, I got healed tonight. She had two pizzas in her hand. She said, good, eat. She took those pizzas. She sat down in her car. She said before she left our parking lot, she had eaten almost half of a pizza. She lived about 45 minutes away, and on her way home, she ate the other half of that pizza. And she got home, and she was well. Amen. She wasn't sick. She wasn't throwing it up. Amen. It didn't come back. Now listen to me. She only came to our church about twice. God didn't say they would come there, but he said when they came, minister to them. Let my spirit use you to touch somebody. I don't care where they go just as long as they go. Amen. It's only my responsibility to do what God tells me to do. We need a move. And we need a sound. How many believes we need a sound? So it's not a man that you look to, but it's the Holy Ghost you look to. When the Holy Ghost fell, no one had to guess that it was there. It filled the whole house. The whole house where they were sitting. When it spilled out to the streets and folks started saying, what does this mean? Peter announced, this is that. That was spoken of by the prophet Joel. Come on, God's just confirming his word. God's just honoring his word. He prophesied about it a long time ago, but this is the beginning of it. Come on! We're coming down to the final stages of it. I'm a firm believer. If God inaugurated his church with fire and with authority and with power, he ain't going to let up. A weak, broken down church 
close this thing out, there's going to be a remnant that gets a hold of the horns of the altar of God. Amen. They're going to be anointed with the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This thing ain't going out with a fizzle. It's going to go out with a bang. God's going to testify he's still God. He's still God. You ready to see miracles like you saw when you read the book of Acts? Then get out from the world and be separate. Say, God, help me to be a part of this church age that's going to close this thing out. Believe in you. Trust in you. Get ready for some persecution. Go back and read it again. To borrow a phrase, I've heard another pastor say, Amen, read the book of Acts and get ready. Amen. They didn't have it easy. They got persecuted. They got thrown in jail. They got beaten. Amen. They were made fun of. Amen. Stephen was stoned to death. Amen. Calling on the name of the Lord, stoned to death. God didn't spare him. God didn't stop him. Come on. It cost him his life. There's people going to die. Come on. Yes. Please, don't flatter yourself telling me you'll be one of those willing to give your life for the gospel when you won't even give up 15 minutes a day for it. Don't even waste your breath. But I believe that if you get a hold of Jesus Christ, you can be. One of those who's willing, whether you have to or whether you don't, at least you'll be willing. Whatever it takes, God. Whatever it takes. Tired of seeing people walk out these doors bound. I want to see life transformation. Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost. He loves you. He loves you. That's why he'll uh, anoint an old hillbilly like me. Country bumpkin that'll preach hard and tell you truth because he loves you. Oh, I can preach you some kind of fairy tale and make you think you're all right. What good's that going to do you? But if I tell you the truth and I tell you where you can find your help, then I've done you a service. Let Jesus fix it for you. He knows just what to do. He knows just what to do. Miss Allison, would you come please? First thing I want to address is the sin issue. I want you to bow your heads with me. Listen. I'm not here playing games. God in heaven knows my heart. I'm not here playing games. I'm standing in the gap making up the hedge this morning. You believe me or you believe me not, I'm standing between heaven and hell. For some that are in this room this morning, And the anointing that's on my life is keeping the powers of darkness at bay to give you an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. Every Christian that knows the value of prayer, I want you to plead the blood of Calvary that will break every chain and every bondage. I'm pleading for your life. I'm pleading for your life today don't turn it away this is your opportunity to get it right with God if I'm talking to you slip a hand up and say preacher ain't nobody looking but me slip a hand up and say preacher keep praying for me come on anybody anybody across this room come on 
I will not prolong this. I'm not going to beg you. He's calling. He's calling. He's calling. He's calling. Come home. Come home. Come home. Come home. You've wandered for a long time, but come home. You're broken. You're wounded, but I can heal all that, he's saying. Come home. Oh, I plead the blood of Calvary. I plead the blood of Calvary. I plead the blood of Calvary. Devil, you're a loser. You're a loser in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break every bondage. I break every stronghold. I take authority over it in Jesus' name. Sing that song, sis. reason to wait. Jesus is calling. He's calling. He's calling. Bring your sorrows to trade There are those joy. watching your life. They're going to follow your lead. What you do, they'll do. Jesus is calling. He's calling. He's calling. He's calling. He's calling. Come to this altar. Russ, help me. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus breaks every stronghold, every bondage, every chain is broken at the name of Jesus and the authority of the name of Jesus. Let liberty come now, liberated, liberated by the power in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, time's ticking away. Time's ticking away. Come now, come, come, come. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes. What I talked about at the beginning of the service, jerking on the inside. I feel that same spirit jerking on the inside of me now. My insides feel like they're just trembling. Amen. The Lord Jesus wants you to be free. Free, 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 free. Are you going to listen to the devil? Or are you going to listen to Jesus? Are you going to partake of what Satan has? Or are you going to take of what Jesus has? This is the last call. That last call.
Lord, for his children, for his grandchildren. God, as he stands here this morning, God, we believe with thee, God, you're going to bring them in. God, you'll call them in from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Arrest them, God. May the Spirit of the Holy Ghost go to them. They've been raised to the right, God. Let him stand, Lord. Let him see, God, they're coming. They're coming. Satan, you can't have them. You can't have them. God, give us more dads that are weep in the altar. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes. Yes, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Franklin Edward in India has needs for his family and for his ministry. Carolyn Bridges strengthen her body. She's on kidney dialysis. Johnny Tyndall struggling in a hard decision, a hard situation. Carlson Hatcher traveling home tomorrow. A healing for Miss Ethel. Let's believe Brother Gary, our buddy, needs a healing in his body this morning. Stretch your hands this way. Let's believe. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, for every need, God, we've called out before you. We plead the blood of Calvary. God, you make the way where there seems to be no way. Open doors, God. Open avenues of finance. God, for ministries, Lord Jesus. And for those sick in their bodies, we decree healing, God, would come to them. Healing in the name of Jesus. We come to the altar, God. Lord, we know your arms are open wide. We come to you, Lord Jesus. We come to you, Lord Jesus. Oh, yes, Jesus. Yes, what a Savior. What a Savior. He's so wonderful. Oh, you can sing hallelujah. that you've come to the house of God this morning how many is grateful you can still hear truth now anybody can lie to you but I don't want to lie I want to preach truth 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 you can be seated Mr. Russell Jeff, you can go ahead. 